In today's video, we are going to go over one of the best option strategy that I have used to more than 5x my money. It's called the debit spread and it is very easy yet super deadly when used correctly. So go get your trading apps ready and let's get into how we can make the most amount of money possible using the debit spread strategy. Welcome everybody back to Pendria Finance. I am Alex Pendria and oh, I am excited about this video. Many of you have asked me, how can I trade options with a small account, right? I have a few thousand dollars and I want to be able to multiply that. What should I be doing? Say no more, I got you covered. Now I've done a lot of videos on selling options and it is my preferred method of passive income when it comes to investing. There's only one problem with selling options. It's boring. The gains are very boring. They're very small in comparison to the potential gains of buying options, right? But also to sell options, you already need a decent size account for those two to 5% monthly gains to be of any significance. Now, selling options does, however, take a lot of risk out of the option trading game. But let's say you have a small account and selling options isn't really attractive to you as of yet. Or say you're the type of person that doesn't mind taking a little bit more risk as long as you can profit more. Well, then you are in luck because the debit spread is your new best friend. We are going to learn what the debit spread trade consists of, how to set it up properly, and go through some examples on Robinhood and break everything down. Now, at the end of this video, we are going to put the strategy together with a plan of attack that you can follow and hopefully turn that small account into some real money. So hit the like button to begin and let's get started. One of my favorite books on trading is this one right here, Market Wizards. Now, it's a whole series of books, but there is a whole chapter in this particular book about Paul Tudor Jones, who is one of the greatest traders alive today. And Jones uses a concept that has recently stuck with me over many years in which I was growing my trading account, and that is the concept of asymmetric returns. The idea is as follows. How can I invest or trade where I risk $1 to make $5. This risk reward way of thinking will allow you to take very little risk for very high rewards. If I risk $1 and lose it, then I have another four times to risk that dollar to make the $5, right? So let's take this concept and apply them to options since the derivatives market is a leveraged market and therefore would be our best chance of making this type of profit. Okay, so now let's talk about buying options, right? When you buy an option, you are paying a premium to buy that option contract and hope that the stock moves in your favor and the option contract becomes more valuable. And then you can sell the contract further for a profit, right? Now here's the problem. A lot of the times the contract that you wanna buy will cost a lot of money in relation to a small account. An Apple contract, for example, with an expiration date of one month away can cost you close to $500. Now, if you have an account of $1,000, that's 50% of your account. Very risky, right? Tesla options can run you into the multiple thousands of dollars. And putting all that money in one particular trade with a high probability that the contracts will expire worthless might not be something that you would wanna do. Maybe you know this from personal experience. I sure do. So we want to solve the problem of paying a lot of money for these contracts while at the same time limit our risk in relation to the potential profit that we can make. Again, going back to that asymmetric return concept. So let's break down the debit spread. So the debit spread will consist of two trades put together. You are buying an option and then at the same time you are selling an option at a further out strike price. The idea is that the credit that you take in from the second trade of selling the option will lower your cost of the contract that you buy. So remember, when selling options, you are collecting a premium. When buying options, you are paying a premium. So in this case, I want to buy an option, but oh, this is costing me quite a bit of money and quite a bit of percentage of my portfolio. Hmm, so let me sell an option that's further out and collect some premium to reduce this cost. Now, debit spreads can be broken up into two categories, call debit spreads and put debit spreads. If you think that the underlying stock that you are trading will go up, you will want to use a call debit spread, right, calls. And if you think that the stock will go down, you will want to use a put debit spread. The word debit means that you are debiting your account to put on this trade. 
debit means paying out, right? So you are net paying out a premium. Remember, when you're collecting a premium, that is a credit, right? So don't confuse this with credit spreads, which would be the opposite of a debit spread. Okay, so here is an example. Let's assume that you have a stock trading at $50 and you think that the stock will trade up to hit $55 by the expiration date. You will put on a call debit spread by putting on the following trades. You will buy the $50 call option and then you will sell the $55 call option. You will pay out a debit for buying the $50 call option, but because you are selling a further out call option, you will get some of that money back, reducing your total cost. Say the contract that you bought cost a premium of $3 and then the option that you sold gives you a credit of $2. This means that you will pay a total of three minus one, $2 per contract. And because each contract controls 100 shares of the company, you will pay a premium times 100 of $100. This is one third of the amount that you would be risking if you were just to buy the call option by itself, right? So the total loss of this trade will be the amount that you paid for that premium you obviously cannot lose more than this. If the stock stays below $50, the strike price that you bought, then you will lose 100% of what you paid to enter this position, which in our case would be 100 bucks. Now, the total profit that you can make off of this would be if the stock reaches the strike price, which is the $55 call, and the amount of the profit will be the difference between the two strike prices minus the premium paid, okay? In our case, we bought the $50 call and sold the $55 call. So the difference in strike prices is $5 or times 100, $500 total profit, but minus the premium which we already paid, which was $100, right? So this gives us a potential total profit for this trade of $400. Now, you can see the risk reward more clearly for this trade. You are risking $100 with the potential of turning that $100 into $500, netting you a $400 profit. Pretty good. Now, the only way to get better at investing, trading, or anything else in life is to learn. And my favorite place to learn new things is today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across the world. It is a place to get inspired and learn from industry leaders that are willing to help you advance your skill set. Now, whether you have a side hustle or a full blown business or are just looking to develop yourself, there is a course for you to take and improve your skills, which in turn will improve your quality of life and make you more interesting, right? Because let's be honest, who wants to be boring? I am a huge fan of lifelong learning and Skillshare has created a way for you to have a more interactive experience in how you learn. It's one thing to click on random YouTube videos with no structure. It is another thing to go through a structured course with Skillshare. I found immense value in learning from the course how not to suck at stock investing one and two. So if you have a specific skill or you're interested in learning something, Skillshare is the perfect place to start your journey. And maybe one day you can become an industry leader as well. Then I will be learning from you. Now the first 1000 people to use my link down in the description with my code Pandrea Finance will get a one free month trial of Skillshare. That is code Pandrea Finance. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Go sign up. And let's get back into the video. All right, let's open up Robinhood and take a look at some live examples. This example, we're gonna take a look at Apple. We're gonna hit trade and trade options. Now, because this is a net debit of our account, that means we are buying options. Now, usually when you buy options, you want to go out further in time. You don't wanna buy weekly options or anything like that. You know, at the very minimum, think a month out, two months out. Uh, usually three to six months should be your minimum of where you're buying options because again, that theta decay will work against you and it's just never a pretty picture when there's nothing left in your option and you say to yourself, oh, I should have went out further in time and then you never learn. But anyway, we're gonna go out to, let's say just for this example, uh, one month out, right? We think Apple is going to move pretty quickly in this month, so let's go to a May 6th expiration date. So we're gonna click on May 6th and then the option chain will pop up. Now I'm gonna think, where do I think Apple will trade up towards? Um, so right now the share price is 175 and let's say I think that it will get to 185, 190 around that area, okay? So we're gonna use that as a benchmark to buy and sell some options. 
So we're going to buy a call first of where we think that at least, at the very least, that this stock can reach. And let's say it's going to be 185. So I think Apple is going to move 7%. You see there, 7% to break even. It's going to move to 185 by May 6th. And I'm going to click on that the little plus sign, which will indicate we are uh, adding more options to this trade, okay? I believe you need to update the app if it's showing uh, if it doesn't show this little plus sign, then you can go in the top right corner, which say select, and you can select multiple options. But if you update the app, then it'll have this new interface. Uh, and then we're going to sell a call above the one that we bought, okay, completing the spread. So we are going to sell a call. And we're going to say, okay, where do we where do we think that it can get to? We said 190. So sell a call above. And in this case, we're selling it for 190. So we're buying the 185s and we're selling the 190s. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to click review. Now you can see call debit spread is selected already in your brokerage, which is really good. Uh, and, and what does that mean? So breaking it down by option trade, Apple $190 calls, we're selling those. And we're, we're collecting a $1.40 premium, right? You can see there. And now Apple 185 calls, we are paying $2.36 premium. So all in total, it's going to cost us 96 cents to put on this trade. And if we would have just bought this contract straight up, the $185 calls, we would have paid $2.36 for it, okay? So quite a difference. Uh, and now if we can click down here right above the break-even price, we can see how this trade has a break-even uh, uh, risk-reward scenario. So obviously here with the red section, the red section is all going to be your loss, right? So if we click and hold around the red section, you can see our max loss is $97. Uh, which is the amount that you are going to pay for the premium, right? So you can't lose more than this. Now, how are we going to have a max loss? Well, we're going to have a max loss if the stock stays below the 185 strike price, okay? So if we click and we go to this first point over here, you can see that if the stock at expiration will be below 185, any time below that, we will have a max loss for this trade, okay? So at any point, even if the stock is at 182 or even if the stock is at 171, it'll be the same max loss. And again, the max loss is your premium paid for the contract. Now, if we go further to the right, we can see the break-even price. Now, the break-even price is going to be represented as your strike price, the 185 that we bought, plus the premium paid. So you add the premium on top of that and you're going to get the break-even price. And now, if it stays above the break-even price, right, you are going to start to get profit, all right? So once it starts going above 185.97 in this case, we're going to start seeing profit, 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 profit. And now you're going to get max profit, all right? So the most that we can make off of this after it hits our, our strike price that we sold. So we sold the $190 call. And you can see here at $190, we have the max profit that we can get with $403. And now no matter how far further higher we go with the stock price, it's going to be the same exact gain, the same exact profit, All right. So no matter where it is above the $190 calls, we will have the same profit, All right. So you can still have profit in between your two strike prices from the 185.97 to the 190, okay? And a little bit of loss if you get from your break-even price down to your first strike price over here. Um, but uh, you can see that you need to get to 190 for the full, for the full profit that you would profit off of this trade. But now let's take a look at what the actual risk reward is. So we're risking $97 in this case per contract, and our reward, our max profit, is $400. All right. So now you can see how the asymmetric returns plays into this strategy. Losing 97, so almost 100 bucks. Here's 100 bucks. The most I could lose is the 100 bucks. The most I could gain is $400, right? Now, this type of risk reward should be in your favor, right? Because you're risking a little bit to make a lot. Now, just an interesting thing here. Uh, if we were to clear this out and go to a further out, so I think it's going to go to 195, right? I think it's going to uh, uh, trend up more than 11.91%, right? So now we're going to set this up as follows. Say we're going to buy the 185 and we're going to sell the 195, okay? So now that is, uh, there's one strike price in between. So now we have the distance between strike prices is $10 rather than five. Watch what happens. I'm going to click over here 
And now let's take a look at what happens to your risk reward. So now we are risking 153 at a max loss per contract, but now we can gain at a max gain of $847, okay? So by playing around with the different strike prices and how far the two strike prices are from each other, it can adjust your risk reward to your risk tolerance and how you wanna put on this trade, okay? So there you go. So let's hit review and let's see what we can do with this trade. Let's say we want to buy two contracts. You can see that our max loss, if we click over here, is going to be $306, the premium paid and the max gain is $1,694, but we have to have Apple hit 195, okay? We can make profit in between, but that max gain is what we are looking for, right? So let's go back and put in, let's say, 20 contracts because we want to risk $3,000 uh, for our risk reward, and let's see what the break-even price is. So our max loss is $3,000, we're putting a $3,000, and our max gain is 16,940. So you can see how the risk reward asymmetric returns plays very well when you have a certain amount of, you know, in this case, buying power. I have a buying power of uh, 114 thousand currently right now in my Robinhood. So you can see three per uh, three thousand dollars is less than three percent of my account. So I'm risking a very small amount to make. $16,900, okay? So is that worth it? Well, that's gonna be depending per individual, but for me, maybe it's worth it, maybe I put on this trade, maybe I readjust, but there you go, that is the call debit spread. It's a very powerful tool, so use it wisely. Okay, so let's put together everything into a plan of attack so that you can best put your chance of profit in your favor as much as possible. The first thing that you have to do to make this a winning strategy is to not over trade okay so this is a risky strategy and although we are tipping the risk reward in our favor you should not use this as an excuse to trade more than a small percentage of your portfolio so the idea is not to go all in on this and to try to three or five x your entire portfolio you want to be able to take a small amount, maybe it's 5% of your portfolio, depending on your risk, and use that to make a calculated asymmetric bet. If you 3X that 5%, that means that you have made a 15% profit for your overall portfolio, which in my opinion is very good. If you lose that 5%, then well, you only lost 5%. And if you feel 5% is too risky, then okay, great, scale it back to a lower amount. Or if you're a little bit of a risk taker, scale it up. Maybe for you, 2% might work better or 20% might work better. If you have a small account of $1,000 and you know that you can make that $1,000 back somewhat quickly, you could be more aggressive. Now, number two on this checklist would be to risk what you are willing to lose in terms of time. Now, I've mentioned this in one of my first videos that I've done here on this channel, but the idea is when you are taking bets, like buying options especially, uh, where the overall odds are not in your favor, you want to be able to make that money that you are risking back in a relatively short amount of time. When you start thinking about how long it takes you to make the money back that you are putting at risk from your income or your business or wherever you get your money from, then that would put a dollar amount that you are risking into a better perspective. When I initially grew my Robinhood trading account, I took the risk of betting one month profit that I took in in my business and risking that with leaps options. Knowing that if I lose all of it, then it would only take me one month to make that back and I was willing to take that risk. So that's very important, right? I wasn't betting my entire life savings on something risky. The next step is to let your winners rise. So this is another important lesson from Paul Tudor Jones and derived from the trading strategies of Jesse Livermore. Now, if you study him, very, very interesting, right? The idea is that you don't want to buy contracts with a very close expiration date because you won't have enough time to let that trade do its thing. If we are using the momentum of a stock market move to push your trade into profit, then we need to let the market do that. On top of that, you don't want to take profits too early and really try to let that stock price reach that outer strike price to profit fully. So let those winners ride out so that you could collect the most amount of profit possible. Remember, risk reward, right? So you wanna try to get that full reward knowing that your risk is limited on the downside. If you follow these guidelines, I think you can better manage this strategy 
and have better chances of profit. Now, if you want to see the trades that I am making and investing in, you can check out my personal Patreon page link down below. I would also recommend you watch this video next, which lays out seven basics that you should know when trading options. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next video.